So this is your big moment today. You're being interviewed, okay? You're being interviewed. Big kiss. There you go. So hey guys, welcome to today's YouTube video. Obviously, we have a special guest with us today. We have Carter Chow Chow because this video is dedicated to him, Chow Chows. I asked over on my Instagram account if you guys wanted me to do a dedicated video talking kind of all about the Chow Chows as a breed. And a lot of guys over on Instagram have sent in some questions that I'm gonna go through today. Just because I feel like so many people have opinions about the breed as them being aggressive and not good with kids and dogs. And I kind of disagree with a lot of that. So a lot of your questions I'm just gonna go through. I know you're hungry. A lot of your questions I'm just gonna go through. So hopefully if you're looking maybe to get a chow chow yourself, if you're struggling yourself with training or kind of anything to do with the breed, then I'm gonna try and answer the questions as best as I can. Obviously I'm not a dog expert, so please do not take my advice and feel like I'm some kind of chow chow expert, because I'm not. But I do feel like he's been so good since I've got him and I feel like I've trained him well. Um, so yeah, this is just my opinions. So I'm gonna get the questions up now. I've never done a video with a dog sitting next to me, so I don't know how this is gonna go. I have got lots of treats here, which keeps him occupied. So hopefully he's gonna be a good boy and stay still. So the first question that someone asked was, how old is he? Very simple question. He is eight months now, um, and it's been the best eight months of my life. Um, I was very skeptical about Getting a dog at the first, I didn't know if it was going to be a good choice, if I had the time for him or anything, but it honestly has been, excuse me, noise, honestly has been an amazing eight months and I would not kind of turn back the clock and I do not regret getting him. So the next one was, which breeder did you get him from? Now I'll link all of their details down in the description box below for you. Um, and someone else did ask, did you do much research on the breeder? Now I do believe that you should do research and I think you should, it's kind of one of those things, it's like word of mouth. So I'd actually seen and know someone who has a chow chow from his breeder. So I knew that they were good breeders. I asked them questions. Um, I did do a little bit of research and I honestly would not recommend this breeder enough. Their name are Sarah and Jason. I'm still texting them every day. Wait. We've got a whole video to go through. I can't give you them all now. Sometimes there's things that I obviously don't know and they always text me back. They always give me the best possible advice. Um, and I think that's always good when a breeder doesn't just kind of sell you a dog and then forget about you. They care about their dog still. They want to know how they're doing. Sit down. They want to know how they're doing. They want to know how healthy they are. So um, yeah, they love their dogs. And even though they're not theirs anymore, uh, they still care how they are. And I think that's really, really important. There you go. Maybe after every question, I'll give you one. So the next one is a big question that a lot of people ask. And that is, that is, are they aggressive around children? And how is their temperament? A lot of people have heard they're very stubborn, aggressive dogs. And I can only base this on him, but I think, when it comes to your dog, it's it does stem kind of from you and how you train them. I straight away introduced him to children. I straight away introduced him to other dogs. I socialized him a lot. Sit down. I socialized him a lot so he would always kind of know to be around people and be good around people. He is a very stubborn dog. So when you take him on walks, if he wants to sit down and doesn't want to walk anymore, you will know it. He will just slump down and doesn't want to move. But he is a very loving dog. I've had no issues with kind of aggression yet. Um, I, he's always around children that are probably winding, winding him up all the time because look at him. Look at his face. He looks like a teddy bear. So I think children sometimes kind of uh, think Okay, chill. Children sometimes think he is a teddy bear, so obviously, oh, let me get it. Oh no, he's gonna try and dive down there if not. People think he's a teddy bear, so obviously they treat him a bit like a teddy bear, but he's never been aggressive. He's never really snapped for anyone. He sometimes get a little bit uh, nibbly, so I've realized recently that if anyone was coming into the house, he would try and nibble their ankles, um, but not in kind of any sort of an aggressive way. It was always just in a playful, attention-seeking way. And he probably gets that attention-seeking from me because 
Maybe if I was a dog, I'd be nibbling on your leg if he wasn't kind of playing with me and stroking me. I've only ever known him to be friendly and loving. He's great around children. A lot of people ask me that. I've got kind of a three month old, would it be fine? He has always been good with my friend's child who I'm currently living with, that she's now three, but he's been around her since she was two. Wait, wait. And uh, he's always been really good with her and he actually, well, he doesn't say it. She calls him her best friend. So obviously they are good for children because it's the children that I'm living with's best friend. The next question is, what do you feed him and how much puppy, uh, and how much up to now from like a puppy up to now? So I can't think of the exact name, but I will link it down in the description box below for you. But I was always advised patience. I was always advised to feed him dry food. I've always wanted to do that as well because I feel like if a dog gets into the kind of the way of eating leftover food and, and like, what do you call it? Wet food. Um, then they're just gonna always beg and want your food and I've never wanted a begging dog. Does he beg still? Yes, because he eats and wants to eat all the time. Um, but I keep him generally the odd treat. I keep him to dry food. In terms of how much I feed him, so when I first got him as a puppy, it was all very new to me. I was feeding him kind of uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And apparently when you get older, after me researching, you should cut the food down to twice a day. So I have just been now feeding him breakfast in the morning, two kind of handfuls. So two good por like portions of food. Wait. And then I give him it around kind of dinner time, five, six o'clock as well. And then obviously some treats, right way, some treats along the way in the day. So he does get hungry. It does make you feel bad when you're kind of eating your lunch and he gives you those puppy dog eyes. Uh, but obviously I want to not overfeed him. So um, yeah, I try and only feed him twice a day with a few odd treats. The next one is, with all dogs stealing, do you get worried about taking them out? And now obviously this is like such a huge thing and it's disgusting what is going on in the world at the minute with so many people stealing dogs and there's a lot of it going around in Essex where, I'm, where I am at the minute as well. And um, yeah, it does really worry me because that bond that you get with your dog when you get him, like if anyone was to steal him, I cannot express kind of how I'd feel. So. You do have to be careful. It obviously is worrying because you never expect these things to happen to you. I've actually been mugged before myself and I would have never expected that to happen. It can happen so unexpectedly. And yeah, I think you just need to be careful. I don't really take him to many parks around, yeah. don't really take him to many parks around too many people, around too many dogs. I take him on a nice quiet walk in the woods where really you're not gonna see a van just pull up and take him. Uh, so I try and go to like more private areas where you're not just displaying him because, kiss, kiss. He is a very expensive dog and regardless of the, the, the price and the money and the insurance on him, I would never want him to be stolen because yeah, it's just gonna be traumatizing. So the next question is, how much does he dribble, malt and shed? So he has kind of changed a little bit really. He doesn't really dribble a lot. When he wants food, I think there's dribbles all over me now. When he sees treats or he wants food, then he will, patience, then he will dribble. Um, but he's not really like a massive dribbling dog. In terms of shedding, it's all down to the grooming. I think someone did ask in here, um, how often do I groom him and stuff? When he was a puppy, he obviously didn't have a lot of fur, so I didn't really have to groom him that often. But now I take him to the groomers every four weeks. I like to get his ears clean, his toenails chopped, because when I got him, his toenails, he doesn't really pick up his feet when he walks. I don't know if this is a chow chow thing or just a carter thing, um, but when he walks, he drags his feet on the floor because his paws are so heavy and big. So his nails, if they get too long, Wait, so now as if they get too long, they were like scraping the floor and then he was getting all bloody, like his feet were bleeding. He wasn't in pain, I took him to the, wait, took him to the vets, um, but yeah, I wouldn't ever wanna hurt him, so I think it's best to just get them groomed every four weeks, trim up all of his hair, do his ears, do his nails, and just give him an, ooh, a nice bath as well. Um, because yeah, I just think he en actually enjoys doing it, it's a little spa day for him. But there is points, maybe it's seasons, I've only had him for eight months, wait. So I don't know yet kind of when the seasons come in, but there was a point where he had big kind of clumps of, of fur around the house, 
but I think since I've started to get him weight groomed more, um, he's generally not really had that much fur kind of coming out. He does like clean himself a little bit, apart from he doesn't clean, <laughs> he doesn't clean his downstairs, so I actually have to get puppy wipes weight <laughs> and clean that for him um, and you do have to clean their ears a lot because they do get really dirty ears so I clean his what's the Macaulay in his ears every single day um, just to make sure that they're obviously clean right moving on to the next question can you walk him off the lead you obviously can if you train them I have trained him um, I think there is a question about training in here in, in a minute but um we'll, so we'll get to that but you could walk him off the lead he does generally know his name and he would come back if he sees other people and dogs, he loves them so much, he just wants to run up to them. So it is hard to kind of stop him from running off, hence why I don't take him to parks. But I think with a dog like this and with everything that's going on, it's probably best you keep them on a lead just so they're not gonna run off. And I get him one of the leads that's extendable as well. So he obviously does have a bit of space to go out and enjoy himself, go in bushes and stuff. I don't kind of keep him on a short lead. Um, but I, unless I was in a friend's garden or on a private property, then kind of anywhere I go, I like to keep on the lead just for my kind of reassurance and for his safety, just because I just would hate to let him off and then he'd run off. And actually, I do have a story on that. I didn't know that if a dog has a yellow visor on, it actually means that you should keep your dogs away from them because maybe like the one we saw was a rescue dog and it can be aggressive to other dogs because of the past it's had. And him, I tried to take him off the lead once and he just ran up to the dog and the dog kind of not attacked him, but was about to attack him. And yeah, it was just something I didn't know, something I learned and something I was like, I'm gonna keep him on the lead from now on. Wait, I'll give you it in a minute. Do Chow Chow's fetch sticks? Yes, when I chuck kind of toys and stuff, he will play fetch with me. Um, I think being in lockdown, I've had a lot of time to play with him and a lot of time to spend with him. So I have kind of been teaching him things like paw, kiss, and then I would do down, but he's on the chair and I don't know where he'd fall. Um, but yeah, they are very kind of not easy to train. Oh, we've run out of treats, this could be a problem. They are not easy to train, but I just watched YouTube videos and um, I just learned things and learned kind of the signs that you do to get them to do the tricks or obviously get them to, to play with you. Um, we'll move on to the train as, I, as I'm kind of touching base with that. It wasn't necessarily easy to train, but I think kind of watching YouTube, wait, watching YouTube videos and um, obviously treats are very much the, the point of when they will do the tricks for you. Um, but he was quite quick and I was quite proud of myself actually because someone asked, did you get a trainer? And I kind of wanted to try and do it myself as we were in lockdown and we had so much time. I wanted to see if I could do it myself and I think his toilet training, he was so good with. Um, I am someone that uh, I tell, like, I will tell him off if he does wrong, not in a horrible way, but I'll make sure he knows who's boss because the breeder did say to me, you have to make them know who's dominant, who's like, who's the, 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 the dad in the relationship, if you know what I mean. So you do have to tell them off as much as they look this cute. And um, yeah, you have to reward them, obviously, when they do something right. So his training actually went really well for me. He doesn't pee or poo inside anymore. Um, he will go to the door and sit and look at it until you let him out to go to the toilet. Um, so yeah, I've had a kind of blessing, really, with the fact that he, he's been so good with that. Someone asked, how long can you leave them for and how big a flat or space do you need to have? Now, obviously it depends. This is all own experiences. I got so much advice from so many different people and so many different people said different things. People were like, you can't leave a dog for longer than two, three hours. Some people like my breeder said, you could leave this dog because it's a very independent breed. You could leave them for 14 hours if you wanted to. Now, obviously that doesn't mean go out every day and leave them for 14 hours because the dog then is not gonna have kind of that bond and relationship with you. Um, but I have left him once on his own for 14 hours. He was fine. I got a little puppy camera in my flat. He generally just played with his toys. I made sure he had enough food out. I made sure that he could go out on the balcony at the time for the toilet. 
now that he won't actually go on the balcony, he only waits to go outside. I probably wouldn't leave him for that long because he would be waiting to go to the toilet. Um, but they are a very independent dog. They don't need a lot of attention and time, but I like to give him it because I love him. Um, but they are quite good at just being on their own. And for instance, when I say they like being on their own and doing their own things, he isn't a cuddly dog. He doesn't really want to sit and cuddle. I don't have him in the bed with me. He more likes to go and sit close by and just kind of be near to you, but he won't really come and sit on the sofa with you and cuddle with you. So if you are wanting one of those dogs that just sits and cuddles you all night, he's probably not the breed for you because he's probably going to go and sit kind of in the corner somewhere near a cold place because he likes kind of cold tile floors. In the bedroom I'm in at the minute, he goes and sleeps in the bathroom rather than in the bedroom. Um, so yeah, he's not like a cuddly teddy bear. How did you socialize him? Kind of already touched base on that. Just made sure that he was around, come here. Just made sure that he was around a lot of people straight away. So he was aware that kind of, he doesn't need to be scared of people or other dogs. They are fine and he can be safe around them. Uh, what's next? What made you get him? I think really, like after being in the first lockdown, um, I just realized that I probably was gonna spend a bit more time at home. I do also work from home, so I knew that I could have that time with him. I'm not out every single day, um, so I'm not just gonna leave him every day. I also know that like my parents, they love him, so I knew that they'd have him if I went on holiday, so I had kind of someone to have him then. Um, but I've wanted a dog since I was about 10. I had one when I was younger. Unfortunately, the dog that I had was a puppy and it passed away because it wasn't very well when we bought it. And I've always wanted one since and it was always kind of my parents that said no. My brother's got two and I was like, do you know what? I wanna see if like I'm responsible enough to have a dog. And if I am, I would probably have a baby and a child next. Uh, kind of the stepping stones. But yeah, I don't regret it. Um, and yeah, I just decided one day, do you know what, I want to get a dog, I've always loved chow chows, and yeah. Uh, what is your grooming upkeep? As I said, every four months I take him to the local groomers, it's always good to do research on groomers as well. Um, the one that I go to, I know that a lot of people use in Essex, I'll link it down in the description box below if you live in this area. But yeah, it is always good to get research on a dog as well. Come and lay here so then you're more comfortable. That's it. And then you'll sit. Um, are they barking dogs? Do you know what? When I got him, he was silent as a mouse. Didn't really make much noise, apart from this, when he's hungry. Um, and he didn't really bark. And I was like, oh, maybe he's not a barking dog. But he has, in the past month, found his bark. And if people like are across the road, he'll go to the front door and bark. It's not like a really loud bark, but he he has definitely found it. And he doesn't really bark at people or other dogs. It's more, you tired? It's more just like intriguing when he looks out the window and he wants to know who someone is. So he wants to try and like get their attention. Um, would you class as a big or medium dog? Well, at the minute I would class him as medium, but I've seen some chow chows and they get huge. He, I actually feel is like, not a mini version, but I feel like he's quite small for his age. I've seen chow chows that are four months and they're about his size. So I don't know how big he's gonna get, but Chow Chows generally do stop growing around 12 months. So he's got like, what, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12? I had to do that on my fingers. He's got like a few months left. So he's rather gonna have a growth spurt or he's gonna be a smaller version, which I would kind of prefer. I don't really want a huge, huge dog because other dogs and children do get scared of him because he looks like a big lion. Um, or if he was bigger, it would look like a big lion. Um, but yeah, he, Generally is like a medium dog, but they can get kind of bigger. Health issues, I believe that Chow Chows are not known for like massive health issues. He's had like a few things himself where actually this is really good information if you get one. The breeder told me all of this the other day. He's had on his leg here a little bold spot, which kind of panicked me that he was eating his own fur for some reason. But apparently these are called hot spots. They're kind of, you get them or they get them in seasons. And there's just certain things that you can get um, to treat it. Also, he's got a bit sore eyes sometimes. So I've just got him this under eye stuff because they kind of not cry, but they get a lot of tears and it causes this blackness under their eyes. So you just have to, I'll link all of the products that I use down. I'm getting fat all in my face. Um, I'll link all the products that I use for these things down in the description box below. But you can just dab this kind of liquid onto his eyes and it helps kind of getting rid of the blackness under his eyes. I get the animal wipes just to clean his ears. 
Um, and I've got this other product that the breeder recommended um, for his leg as well. Now stay here, we're nearly done now. Do they smell and how, how often do you wash them? So I, as I said, I take it to the groomer every four weeks. I also give him a bath kind of every two weeks, just because he is a fluffy dog, he is gonna hold kind of a bit of a smell. Um, so I just get some natural shampoos and conditioners just to give him a nice wash. He seems to love the bath as well and he loves kind of the hairdryer afterwards. So it's kind of a treat for him as well as a treat for me because he doesn't smell any anymore. Um, and in terms of smelling, not massively, but I think you'd be very rare if you got a dog, stay here, you'd be very rare if you got a dog that didn't have a dog smell. So I do try and kind of um, spray him and wash him a little bit. Oh, you're getting comfortable. No, stay here. Where you get? No, <laughs> sit down. Oh, he's kind of bored now. We're nearly done. We're nearly done. Um, so yeah, he's not a massive smelling dog. Like it's not horrible stench, but he has a dog smell, of course. I think that is all the questions I've got. I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, really about him that anyone would need to know. I just think if you're looking to get a chow chow, obviously take advice from other people, but I do think it all stems from kind of how you treat them, the love and the attention that you give them, because he is very friendly, he loves dogs, he loves people, and I was told that um, they wouldn't be like that. So yeah, it's. I think another thing as well I'll say, a lot of people said like they're not good in cars, but he drives with me in the car and he, he's fine. He wants to put his head near the window. He comes back to my parents, which is like two hours away. And I've never really had a problem. But again, I got him straight into coming in the car with me when I got him. And I think he's obviously used to it. So I think when you get a dog, don't expect it or just think it needs to be in the house. Take it for walks because don't be lazy and just keep it in the house. Take it for walks, take it in the car, take it around friends. I took him as a kid or as a baby, or as a puppy. Um, I took him everywhere with me, introducing him to everyone. So it's just introducing him to the things he's then gonna see when he gets older. So he's not scared of dogs, he's not scared of people, he's not scared of cars and all of those things. But yeah, I think that's it for the questions that I got. If anyone has any other questions, please pop them down in the comments box below and I can get back to you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped anyone that's just switched onto my channel and obviously wanted to know about Chow Chows as a breed. I would definitely give you a thumbs up and recommend that you get one because I wouldn't change the breed that I got for the world because he's just the best little man. If you don't already follow him on Instagram, I'm gonna put his Instagram down in the description box below because he's a little famous dog with, of course, that face. Um, but yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to, can't get my words out. Please don't forget to go and subscribe. And me and Carter, We'll see you again very soon or next week on another video. Carter, say bye. Come up, 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 up. Are you falling down? Oh, sit down. Sit, sit, up, high five, high five, high five. Yay, say bye. Bye. Kiss. Ah, oh, well done. Good boy. That'd be a good boy. You stayed here the whole time. Yes. <laughs>